Woe be unto him who opens one of the seven gateways to hell, because through that gateway, evil will invade the world. We're here to uh, tackle the first kind of special video for 1981. Now I got a bunch of guests lined up, but the first one is Carly Sonnefeld. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, so 1981, we are decided to do Madman. This is one of Carly's favorite slasher movies. And when I heard her say that, like the top 100 movies on Exploding Heads, I was like, holy shit. You know, I, I haven't seen the movie in a long time. So rewatching it was kind of a treat. You know, I bought this thing five or six fucking times in my lifetime. Um, this was a regional horror film, uh, definitely kind of hopping on the bandwagon of Friday 13th when they saw that like these independent slashes were getting picked up by big studios and they obviously thought they could do a good job. They said that they had, what, three options to make a movie, a porn film, an action adventure deal, or a horror film. They went with horror film. Uh, producer and director came together. This is the director's only film he's directed and he passed away in 2006. 
But uh, yeah, Madman. It's based on, loosely based on the Cropsey story, which is crazy because the burning also came out this year, also mm-hmm. based on kind of that loosely the same material. So yeah, what, what are your first thoughts on Madman? When the first time you've seen it, all that kind of stuff. Well, I saw this. I didn't see it too long ago, actually. It was like several years ago when I first met JP. We saw it at the drive-in and... I thought it was really creepy at the drive-in. I was like, what is this? And I thought it was spooky. JP was like, yeah, it's just kind of like a six out of 10 slasher. Cause he had done it on like 22 shots. And I was like, I think it's really good. It's like really creepy. And the atmosphere is really good. And it's got a song and it's like all blue and shit. Like I thought it was cool. So yeah. And then since then I've watched it. I watch it like every summer, but it's actually not even a summer movie. It's like set in like November, which is weird. Yeah, they, so. they couldn't get the funding, so they kept like pushing yeah. it back, and then they didn't think it was gonna happen. Then all of a sudden, they were like, "We're doing it." It's like, bro, it's November. It's- <laughs> Why are we filming a summer camp slash year in November with four fucking kids? And they, like, they don't pretend. It. Yeah, and they don't pretend either. They're like, "Oh, it's right before Thanksgiving break," so it's not like they're you know all in winter coats at least in the middle of August or something like that. But yet they were still trying to like spray paint the leaves. I would have just gave up. I'm like, it's over. Yeah, who cares? Who gives a shit? <laughs> so stupid. But no, yeah, I think it's good. And yeah, I watched, I assume you watched that uh, commentary on it that's on the I, Yeah, I listened disc. to part of the commentary, all the special features, all the featurettes. And then I listened to a interview with Paul Ellers on the Dead Pit Radio, which was really good. And uh, uh, Paul Ellers plays Madman Mars. And I listened to some other things, you know, uh, the Hysteria Continues podcast. And they were pretty rough on it. I know they did a commentary as well on the disc, but I didn't listen to it. But they were rough on it on their old episode on a podcast. I was like, I don't. They were like, eh, it's all right, like a five. And then they also get the burning of five out of ten. I was like, for a slasher oriented <laughs> podcast, you guys sure don't like fucking any slashers. Yeah, those are like you... two of the cream of the crop. Those are like the two the like mid tier best, right? Yeah. Like I would hate to hear them talk about something from like two thousand five that's like a piece of garbage. I mean I think they've warmed up know. lately. Like I think they probably softened. But you know They're they trying they're trying too hard. Yeah, they probably don't rate like we do. Like if we like, they probably like think a five's decent, like or a six. It's like yeah. I like this movie. It's a nine and a half. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, the one thing I did realize about this movie, watching it, it's like in eighty one and all the eighty one movies. There's always like these weird exposition dumps, right? Like because we had in the Friday Thirteenth Part Two, we have the campfire thing where they're talking about mm. Jason, and the burning, we have them talking about Cropsy. and then in Hell Night, we had that scene where uh, is it is it, uh, the guys leading them to the the, the Garth Manor. And he's telling yeah. them the whole giant backstory. And it's like the My Bloody Valentine has the whole big story in the mind. I think that uh, acts, no, the big, the heavy guy says he tells them the whole story. Yeah. You always make the best actor tell the whole story. I mean, that's obviously in My Bloody Valentine. Like, he's the best. He's going to do the story. But no, there's like all those guys. And it's just like all these movies have it. And this actually is probably one of the best done the way it's edited because it opens up with it and it shows like foreshadowing of Madman Mark killing. And the guy who plays, uh, what, what's his name in it? Max? The guy who plays like the um, the, the owner, he is so oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah you know, they, I agree. He's he's one of the best actors in the movie. I think he's my favorite character just because he seems like quirky, but also like you like think he's gonna be a dick, but he's also like the sweetest guy ever. Yeah, he's like that part where he's like, "Oh, and that beer you have on grounds yeah. is not allowed here. Save me." I'm like, "Aw." He's like, it reminds me of like a sitcom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I was glad he didn't get killed. I was I know, waiting yeah. for him to bite it. I was waiting for I, I hadn't seen it in years, so I was waiting for him to come back and be like, and get get messed up. Um, no, they they originally wanted Vincent Price for that, but he was twelve thousand dollars for three days. How good would Vincent Price have been in that role? <laughs> I can't even. Wow. He'd be like, kind of- "Man, man, Mars." In that role, it's so funny. No, but uh, I love that. Like, whole opening is great. Um, like, it's just a really good scene, and it's, it does have that regional quality. And I would say, like, mm-hmm. Friday has it too. And mm-hmm. um, what is the East Coast slashers, the summer camp slashers that no one else really can do? Like, they, it, like if you go to the West, they don't really have that in the West Coast. You know, like Sleepway Camp has that certain charm. They seem like independent, but also like professional enough that they're would get distributed i miss that kind of shit like those pickups like big companies or mm-hmm. medium-sized companies would pick these movies up so everybody was gunning to make a good movie a product that could actually sit on a video store shelf and then we have sobs come out and everybody's just like just get the tapes on there we don't care what's on it <laughs> you know yeah, what i mean it gradually just got worse <laughs> yeah until nowadays we're just like fucking putting on like there's not even shelves anymore there's just Tubi movies <laughs> <laughs> it gave people too much power 
Uh, yeah, it, I think Madman Mars is something that stands out. I think the killer is really scary, and uh, he's big, mm-hmm. but he's quick. He's got like the um, he's like legitimately has um, he's he has agility, which is shocking. Yeah, and I, I like how they keep him in the dark pre- pretty much the entire movie until the very end. I mean, it's all just they do a good job of you see his face but you really don't i mean you'll see like his eyeball or like his hair and then that part where he's standing up in the tree when that richie kid like looks up there that's like so cool that's genuinely creepy as shit and like i do kind of like that it is cold because you're so used to the slasher because when we would go camping like 90 percent of the time it was some dumbass time we shouldn't have went camping and it's freezing and everybody's like (laughs) (laughs) but uh like even being in the cold makes it just kind of add an element of like like i don't know a worse element for you you know what i mean uh, but no, I, I really like the killer himself and they set him up. Like they set him up really well with that great like story. And, and the funny thing is the cropsy, you know, and, and, and the burning has a similar, they're like, he's just mean as shit. Like they do mm-hmm. do him wrong. Madman Mars really never, he got what he had coming to him. I mean, he butchered his family, but I love the little <laughs> detail that yeah. they're like, he got part of his nose bitten off in a bar fight. And you're just like, what is this? Dirty work? Like they get a Chris Farley. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, they set it up really well. Um, I like when he's telling the story and you, you see the like the house off bastard. in the distance. It, it doesn't really look right because then that kid throws the rock and it seems like the house is like really far away, but like the rock goes through. The, I think it's kind of funny the way that's shot, but um, I think the house looks really creepy and just I don't know. This movie just has really great atmosphere and I feel like it doesn't get talked about enough. Like people don't appreciate it or they ha- they haven't seen it. And again, they have a song and it's. Oh, the song like, is great. Like that's, they put effort into this. That's not the only one this year that has that song. Of course, we got the My Bloody Valentine one, which is excellent. Oh, yeah. yeah, that came out the same year. Yeah, I didn't and, think about um, that. I think Don't Go in the Woods Alone has a really crummy song in it. Um, I've never the same seen year. that. Oh, boy, man. If, you, if It's intentionally made like just stupid. Like there'll literally be a character in the movie for two and a half seconds. He's like, I'm going to get a drink. And you introduce him. And then a minute later, he's dead. And you're like. It happens like, like Friday times, five. and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, but Friday five is at least quirky, good actors and nudity and fun. Like this one, I you're see. just like, this is so poor. Like, I love Friday five. Yeah, me too. Uh, the the one hit on this movie is like, I like Galen Ross in here, which is crazy mm-hmm. that she's even in this fucking movie. She never like, she I know, like whatever. It's like she's in three movies, two George Romero movies and Madman. It's like, yeah, that's weird. But uh, Galen Ross is solid. Um, some of the other ones are solid as to, as well. But I, I think some of the guys in here are really kind of crummy actors besides Max. I think they're just mm-hmm. like, I don't know if they're crummy characters or just kind of like, ugh. I mean, like the killer stands out so much better and he's so much more invested than anyone else in the movie, the actor. Um, mm-hmm. and, and not everyone's bad. Like, I mean, there's like completely like throwaway characters like the drunk zippy or whatever the fuck his name is he's fine Mm -hmm. (laughs) like yeah but like i I go back to thinking of a couple of the guys like and i'm just like these guys suck like (laughs) (laughs) i can't stand the the frizzy haired girl that hides in the refrigerator i can't stand that character like i wish she she's like she makes it to like the very end and it's like she should have been killed first she gets fucked up yeah she does She's also, she, like, there's a point in the movie where she's with her boyfriend and she's like, it's so nice out. Let's go for a swim. I'm like, that line should have been taken out of this film because it's not summertime. They, they do that shit, too. I remember that movie, Kathy's Curse. I remember a lot of people were talking about mm-hmm. that. And it's like, they're like, they changed, like, they never changed the script, but scenes weren't happening. Like, somebody broke a glass and, and like, it was all over the floor. And she's like, all right, now that I got this cleaned up. And she, like, picked one piece of glass up. There's, like, 40 <laughs> pieces of glass on there. It's like, like I, I don't know. Like, no, like, I remember somebody pointing out, I was like, nobody changing the script here. They should literally, like, change this, we change the script. Yeah. It's so weird when people are just, like, in, like, East Coast or, like, Midwest and they're like, let's go for a swim. Bitch, it's October. Nobody yeah, goes for I... a swim in October unless you're insane. Right. <laughs> it's like, if there's dead leaves. You ain't in the fucking pool. <laughs> so do you like, um? what do you think of uh, TP? Do you think he's uh, a total douchebag and the, that girl is Galen Ross's character is easily just like, yeah, okay. Like he like apologize. Like that's so cringe when he's like, I would like to make an apology and everyone just claps. Like no one acts like that. No, it's weird. It's a bizarre scene. And then the hot tub scene and the music is really that's weird awful. too. <laughs> And I think the guy, Tony Fish, um, he, he, he that's not his real name, but he went by Fish because he worked in the fish industry and shit. Um, I think that he sung that song in the hot tub. Yeah. And stuff. yeah, I think he was a singer. And I don't know about his character. He dies brutally. 
and he does a good yes. job when he gets killed. He he gets a, a like a, a strung out strung out death, no pun intended. You know what I mean? It's going on for like five minutes, and he's fighting, and you're like, and he's got a he's like he saves himself for a second, yeah. And then Mad Man comes back and just pulls on him. I was like, oh, that's that's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, the deaths aren't like completely like amazingly original, but they always take it a next little step further to like add an element of like. Hmm. That was just really fucking mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I love when that girl has her head in the car. That was that's oh, super that was cool. When, yeah. Doesn't um Jake Seinfeld um in Home Sweet Home the same year kill somebody like that? Doesn't he jump on them when they're in the hood of their car? That's I don't a think I've ever. This year. I don't think I've seen that movie either. So it's I cannot bad. tell you. It's not a good movie. <laughs> it, it's made the video that's probably why. List. I but mm -hmm. it's crummy. I don't know. It's got to be the drug use in the beginning or something. I don't know. You know, remember that show, uh, the uh, the Body by Jake? Remember that old advertisement? No. It was like an infomercial, and there was this like ripped guy named Body by Jake, and he was uh -huh. like a famous like a like athletic guy selling his product. But before that, he was in a 1981 slasher as like a, a PCP crazed killer on Thanksgiving. Oh, time. okay. Oh, okay. I'm sure. I'm sure Arrow or somebody will release it, and everyone will be like. This is so bad. It's great. But... That sound that sounded exactly like something that like vinegar syndrome or something would oh, yeah. out. I mean, I would buy so. it. I would get it I because know, you... I have to. I've yeah. seen the movie fucking three times. I'm like, I don't know. I keep watching this piece of crap, but I do. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm like, also, like I said, I like how they set up his like backstory. Like usually, there's always like a tragedy with a killer. Like Cropsy, you know, he was a piece of shit, but he did get something gone wrong to him. Jason has a sympathetic yeah. element to him. I mean, he's kind of in the, the vein of like a Freddy character, right? Like that's Freddy, what I was going to, yeah, Freddy, right? Like Freddy had it coming, mm -hmm. but also it was unjust. It was like mm -hmm. vigilante justice, mob justice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I mean, he's, he, yeah, he's a scary guy too. Like he's just, is he wearing a mask or is it like makeup on his face? I feel I like he's wearing a, a mask. And I never noticed it until the 4K, and I've only noticed it one spot. Usually, it looks really good, but there's one point where, like, I see like his eye underneath. Like, yeah, her, that's. And I'm like, wait a minute, bro, you're just wearing like a mask. Yeah, which again, I think that's it's good that they keep him in the dark the whole movie because yeah. it would be not he would look really stupid if they kind of showed that the entire time. But do you know how he yeah. got this job? No, he was the artist, like doing the artwork, and they're like, we can't find a hulking killer, and he was just like, and he was just like, and he was, Paul Ellers was a big horror fan. Like he knew a lot mm. about horror movies. Like if you ever hear him talk, he's like, he's like casually referencing like Exorcist three and being like, and Blandy directed that when I was hearing him and stuff. So he's like, yeah, this guy is a horror fan, you know? And that's kind mm -hmm. of refreshing to see that. And he was just like, he was an artist to do the artwork. And then they're like, well, what about you? He was like, and he knew martial arts and he was like 280 pounds at six foot five. They're like, so he was agile enough to like, you sound like you could do it. So he just took it over and he, uh, he did his best. I mean, he's probably the highlight of the movie to be honest. Yeah, that was a good job. I like I like that he growls too. Oh yeah. It's yeah. a creepy touch. Kind of weird, but it's creepy. Well, it adds like that element of like kind of like uh beast like kind of character, beast killers, like yeah. Jason again. Jason this year, you know, he had that kind of like I don't even know the term. They always said mongoloid killer, which is a completely outdated, <laughs> improper term now. But yeah. uh it, it was a lot like that. I mean, Hell Knight had that as well, just before mm -hmm. Dawn had that as well the same year. Both those movies had like the kind of deformed killers. And I mean, you'd have the prey a couple years later. You'd have um, Humongous a year later. So like that was a big thing there to have the kind of mutant killers. And you have even the year before with the unseen, you have the mentally handicapped killer in the basement. Mm. So it's like the idea that the killer is deformed to some extent, you know, and, and curse Night of the Demon, but the, the Bigfoot movie from 1980, also kind of mm. reminiscent of Madman Mars. So it's like a lot of these slasher movies like are rarely like, you know, you usually have them set around the school or like in the city and you'll have something like night school or even final exam and you know mm -hmm. the killer's human or graduation day but then when you get to the woods there's it's more likely that it's not just going to be a guy somebody's going to be deformed yeah, but... <laughs> you know like yeah in the rituals is the same deal like in 77 like or 76 i 77 you know like the people that they're actually chasing them are not right they're inbred or the deformed or something's up you know yeah yeah just, i never thought about that but yeah that's the common theme Oh, yeah. I mean, you got rule or city or like city slasher movies. So it's one or the other, you know? Yeah, they all have that formula. Going for them. I think it would be fun to have like a, a slasher movie where they go out and they think it's like the inbreds, but it's just one of their group blaming it on the inbreds, picking everybody off. Like, yeah, I never liked that... you motherfuckers. I'm just going to blame it on these hillbillies in the woods, like <laughs> these rich assholes. That's something some rich people would do. Yeah. 
Well, kind of that makes me think of like Tucker and Dale. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. In a way, try that. That's funny, but. Um, one thing that really surprised me about the movie was, um, I, I was rewatching it. And I was like, I was watching Galen Ross and I'm so used to mm -hmm. seeing her in Dawn of the Dead be kind of like, you know, the heroic type or the type that comes around and becomes like, she's like a well-rounded individual, like a real human, mm -hmm. being, a good character, a very strong character overall, you know, with lots of like different layers in her. So like towards the end of the movie, when she gets killed, when like that Mark, like she got hit in the face with that, I was like she dies she fucking dies and they put her on the meat hook like texas chainsaw style i was like oh wow i didn't remember that she bit it like that and it was kind of actually a little like kind of downbeat yeah and it kind of just happens really like she does <laughs> like she goes in there shoots the gun then he's just like nope you're you're f too like she she's not much of a final girl and then by the end oh. you just got that richie kid as like the final person but it's just because he's stupid and was like hiding out in the woods the entire movie but how often does that happen where like the the catalyst to the problem is the one who lives they just but, cause a yeah. bunch of shit leave well so, somebody yeah. mentioned it was the same thing with friday five the guy who did the killing gets away yeah or irreversible even the guy who commits the rape yeah. doesn't get killed he just is fucking standing there watching and it's just like that drives you nuts this yeah. one is it's a lot easier because i don't really care that much like irreversible makes me sick to my stomach so like yeah, that watching that you're just <laughs> very frustrating but uh or this saving one, private like ryan funny. yeah yeah this one you're just like i don't care <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not really attached to any of the characters in the movie except madman and max the guy who mm -hmm. tells the story yeah yeah no i like i don't care about galen ross's character i mean she's fine in that role but yeah you don't care about her i can yeah no. i can't believe like it is so weird that she's only been in three movies and this was the second one because i remember watching this and thinking she looked familiar and then I looked it up and I was like, she can't be the lead, like the lead in Dawn, a movie like Dawn of the Dead and then be the lead in this slasher movie. To, like, it it is weird. Wrong. Yeah. It is strange, you know, and like then she was in a bit role in Creep. She works behind yeah. the camera. She makes documentaries now and everything. And I was mm -hmm. shocked to see her. She had not talked about this movie ever. And the new 4K of uh, Madman had an interview with her on it. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was really cool to watch that. I mean, I, I got the meter for Dawn of the Dead, obviously. And I was excited mm -hmm. to see, you know, but it, it was just kind of strange, you know, after all these years. And like, I don't think it was any hard feelings. It was probably just like, I don't want to talk about this fucking thing, you know? She probably thinks no one even like knows about it or cares yeah. enough to talk about it too. I mean, I, this is what I, if I met, if I meet her, which I'm sure I will one day, because she always comes to Living Dead Weekend, I would get her to sign Madman. Definitely. Madman Mar. She'd be like, yeah. yeah, I think she would think I was really cool. <laughs> Right. She exactly. probably asked you to go to dinner with her. Can I treat yeah. you to dinner? That was really <laughs> awesome. She'd be like, I don't have any Madman stuff. Do you want this daughter that 10, ten <laughs> eight by 10 or not? It's all I got. <laughs> so like, like I said, I knew there wouldn't be too much to talk about it. Uh, the soundtrack's great. Yeah, I was going to bring that up too. Just like the score anytime anything happens is really good. It's, it's very it's so weird. fitting. It's mm -hmm. like bizarre. It's almost quirky. Like it's almost seems low grade, but it's also so perfect for it. I don't even know mm -hmm. how to do it. Like, but the movie does, like I said, it has a regional charm to it when regional was actually like good. Like I feel like all the mm -hmm. best horror movies, like I you, I would say Texas Chainsaw, Night of the Living Dead, they have like a regional charm to them too. And I feel like this one does too. It has like that. This is a Staten Island movie. So that's fun. Uh, made by not in Staten Island, but by people from Staten Island. And I just like when I think of that, like that New York, New Jersey, I always think like Sloop Boy Camp, Madman, Friday 13. I feel yeah. like, you know, they're just not going to take much shit <laughs> from people. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is, I mean, and then I wish, I wonder, like they said at the end of that commentary that they were trying to set it up for a sequel. I can't remember if they yeah. said anything else about that, but it, you know, they never did make a sequel, which is. No. Which is strange. And The Burning never had yeah. one, or My Bloody Valentine never either. Yeah. Too, too. So, like, they had the remake. I mean, but... it's fine, but, yeah. I mean, there's a lot worse movies that have a sequel. Fucking The Mutilator's getting a sequel right. this year. The Mutilator. Right. I mean, I think The Mutilator is probably on the not as good as Madman, but close. Close. That's why I, I just like watched it. The Mutilator the other night. Um, I watched the Joe Bob thing on Shudder. Yeah. I fell asleep before the ending of The Mutilator. But that's a fun, yeah, that's a fun movie too. But I was thinking like, this is very much on par with Madman. Like I would almost watch these as a double feature because that's another yeah. one. It's it's fall break. They're, fall it's break. fall and they're, <laughs> they're <laughs> they out on a big trip. They let you know by the, the theme music there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they make sure. <laughs> 
can't but, uh, that, that. that is that is strange because they're both movies that both slashers that somebody went out that's not like filmmakers established filmmakers and they're like hey yeah. i think we can make a slasher movie i think we can make something pretty cool and they end up being like two kind of like low low like little i don't want to say the a they're not a list but they're 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 fun and people remember them fondly you know mm -hmm. video store yeah. staples i would call them yeah for sure so i'm gonna go down a list of 1981 slashers and you have to tell me better or worse than madman just your personal taste uh -oh. all right okay I probably yeah. won't even. I probably won't even know half of these. But go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll I'll keep it heavy hitters then. I'll okay. keep it the heavier hitters. Okay. Uh, final exam. Do you know final exam? Yeah. Um. What, what I prefer, Madman. Okay. Um. <laughs> Scream. Have you ever seen Scream from '81? No, I have that. I think I have a like a bootleg of that that I haven't watched. So oh, it's been released like a hundred times now. Yeah. There's a four. Maybe screen. that's not. Maybe that's not it then. I don't it know. might be. No, I mean, it, I it wasn't released for years. Okay. Okay. So um, then, of course, we got some of the heavy hitters like The Burning. Um, I prefer this over The Burning, Ooh. to be honest. Yeah, The, the Burning, I think, is a little overrated. The Prowler, I don't really like at all. So I would go mad. I, if we're going quality, I mean, yeah, those movies are probably all better quality. But... I don't know if The Prowler is much better than uh, this one. You know what I mean? Like in terms of quality. Maybe. Probably. I mean, I mean it's, it's got, Joe it Zito. does have the... It's got the special effects kind of going for it. It's got Which, this one has good effects, but yeah. The effects are pretty good for a, for an independent one, for sure. Oh, I should mention, the scene that kind of made me jump is when the, the frizzy hair lady, she gets shot in the face with a shotgun. Yeah. I did not remember <laughs> that. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, this messed her up bad. <laughs> but um, then we have uh, Just Before Dawn. Oh, I like that movie. I would put that above this one, I think, actually. I think I think it's better. And that was a rewatch, too. I hadn't seen it in years. And I was just like, I love uh, um, uh, Mike Mike uh, Kellen from uh, Sleepaway Camp. Mm. He's in that, too. <laughs> I haven't seen that. In, I need to watch Just Before Dawn again. It's been it a holds few years. up. It holds up. Yeah. It's creepy. And it's all during day. Most of it's all during. Broad I know. Day. Yeah. And this one's all at night and they didn't do any day for nights. This is all night for night, which is hard to do because you mm. got to think of it. That's tough on a low budget night for night. Yeah. So many low budget movies you'll pop in and it'll just be like blue, like bright. It'll be like, you'll see the fucking sun and they'll put a blue yeah. filter over like it's nighttime. It's like, <laughs> bro, there is a goddamn fucking bunch of birds and the sun right there. It's like, like no, 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 no. I promise. <laughs> That's like we're like it's a dystopian future, and then you see like a school bus go by with a bunch of nuns <laughs> and kids in it. You're like, is it though? Is it? Uh, so, Bloody Moon. You ever seen that one? No. All right. I guess I lied about heavy hitters. I'm going. I've never even movies. heard of that one. <laughs> That's a Jess Franco. Did... <laughs> Your favorite, Jess Franco. Oh yeah, of course. Um, Halloween two. Uh, that, yeah, that's definitely better than this. I like Madman better. Oh, okay. I'm not a big Halloween 2 fan. Um, okay. My Bloody Valentine. Uh, that's way better than... Not way... What, what, sorry, not way better, but that's better than this one. Yeah. Might be the best slasher of the year. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard Probably. to say. Probably. Uh, Friday 2. Uh, yeah, I would put that above above Mad Men. Yeah. Um, so what else is there? Happy birthday to me. I like Mad Men a lot better than that. When's the last time you watched that one? I was actually really surprised how much that one held up. Um, a few, probably 2019, 2018, I saw that. I watched it again. Um, I liked it better. Like, I I remember seeing Happy Birthday to Me when I was a kid and being bored by it and thinking it was weird, but I, I've i liked it a lot more. As, I think it's a little too long, but... It is a little. It's almost like an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it, I do it like is. it. Um, do you ever see Night School? Yes. I have the uh, whatever Warner Bros. Yeah, Blu-ray of that. I think I, I so I've only seen that once. It's loose in my memory, but I think I liked it. Thought yeah, it I cool. rewatched that one too, and it was like, wow, this holds up. Bad. Like all these, I saw like when they like on like when I was like like fifteen to twenty, maybe younger, and then like yeah. rewatching them. I remember I didn't remember them fondly, but then rewatching them, I was like, I must have been watching pure shit because these are all really good. Right. <laughs> uh, Hell Knight. Mm hmm. I prefer Madman. The Fun House? I prefer Madman. Graduation Day. I don't like that movie. I think I said that on your... You were like, this is a pretty good movie. And I was like, dude, that movie is like garbage. It's all right. 
Uh, <laughs> it's really not good. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes of a Stranger. Is that... I don't know. Have I seen that? What's that about? It's like the rear window style story where like she witnesses that weird neighbor and like starts following him. And he's like a there's like a sleazy slasher but, going around. That's not the movie with Jennifer Jason Lee. Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Okay, it is. Uh, I'll go with Madman. I haven't seen. I, I I have seen that movie, but it's been I've seen it once like years ago. They put Dark Knight as the Scarecrow as a slasher. I don't know if I'd call that a straight up slasher. I guess it is. It is, but it's not a typical. I mean, it's a TV movie, so it's kind of. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I would put her in the killer scarecrow category, I guess. But I guess you but, can say those are slashers in a way. Is it I a mean, scarecrow, though? That's what's so mm, weird about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? They leave it open-ended. Uh, yeah, so I think the only ones you put above it were Halloween 2, Friday 2, and um, My Bloody Valentine. So this is your fourth yeah. favorite slasher of the year. I, I guess so, yeah. The, the thing I noticed really weird about 81 besides the slashers is everybody talks about the slashers, but like in the two big werewolf movies, but like looking through, there's like mm. six werewolf movies. Really? Yeah. And not all of them are fucking quality. I mean, there's like full sure. high, which is okay. And like Wolfen, which isn't really a werewolf movie, but there was like the Paul Nashy movie in 81. And I was just like, Oh wow. Mm. And there's like a couple other ones that were just bizarre too. Mm. So like, what do you think you're in comparison to the other 1981 movies? What what are some of your favorites? I mean, you got like the Beyond and Evil Dead, stuff like that. A lot of heavy hitters like that. Well, shit, 1981. I gotta look the year. Cat, chill out. Hold on. Let's 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 see here. Stand by. I just typed in 1981 instead of 1981 horror, thinking anything would come up there. Okay, here we go. Um. Oh. I, mean, I got a big list right here if you want. I got Possession, yeah. Evil Dead, American War from London, My Bloody Valentine, Howling, Scanners, The Burning, Friday 2, Cannibal Ferox, Halloween 2, The Beyond, you know, Prowler. Yeah, I, I got um, I American Werewolf from London. I really like that. Uh, that's probably my favorite werewolf movie, yeah. even though, you know, me and my John Landis hate. Um, <laughs> Evil Dead. I really like Evil Dead. Um, yeah, honestly, most of these, uh, like, it's like the slashers are the ones that I really... Um, would prefer over anything i've never seen student bodies i gotta watch that it's pretty funny if you if you like I, stupid humor it's just non-stop yeah, yeah. crap it, it, it yeah. like there'll be a bad joke and then like five good jokes it, it cracks me up it's very funny the boogans the i think I, I saw i saw that at a drive-in too actually <gasps> The boogans has that good quality like kind of regional charm like my bloody valentine and all the characters but then like it it's it, i like it but at the same time it's like let's 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 speed this up guys right let's speed the <laughs> let's get some books yeah, in but, here and call it a fucking day yeah yeah let's oh, get to uh, the goods about the sequels they were uh paul eller was talking about that and they were talking about trying to do these forever and like mm. usually when you hear about a sequel being made like 20 30 years later you're like oh this is gonna be a big pile of shit this yeah. is gonna be terrible and like hearing him talk about his ideas i was like he had like ideas that a lot of people had like after him like i was like oh these are actually good ideas these are legitimately mm. good ideas and he had like a lot of passion for the horror genre so mm -hmm. i feel like as long as his son you know is, is would be directing it his son was born while they were making mad man so oh okay so that's Ooh. a nice little touch i mean it would be nice i actually would kind of like to see a sequel as long as it's made like with love and, and good ideas you know the last thing i want is just to scream rehash that's what a lot yeah, of these sequels I mean, to do like it's self-aware in the first movie it's like you're not going to be the remake of town that dreaded sundown you're not even gonna be that successful you know <laughs> yeah no yeah i would i mean i'd be down with it i'm open to anything really and yeah if it's like within the family then it probably it would probably be fine i mean I, so. that mutilator remake looks really rough yeah <sighs> Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. The thing is, like, I don't know if Buddy Cooper has been sticking with movies at all. So, like, he hasn't been making movies since he made that movie. Yeah, I mean, he he's... Not, I don't know if he's been keeping up with it or what. He's, like, the guy who was, like, a lawyer, wasn't he? Like, that was, like, he, his, his real job. Or... owned, like, that that resort. I don't know what he did. You know? Uh, okay. So, he, yeah, he was just, like, some rich guy that was, like, I want to make a movie. Yeah, I don't I know. Don't, I don't even know if they're um, that well off. I, I think they literally <laughs> had the pull. You know what I mean? Like, he, they put a lot of money up, you know? I think they took a big chance. But mm. but it's just weird. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it'd be tough. Like, I, I just, it's hard for independent filmmakers to get a budget. Like, they should. Like, you should be able to get, like, madman money, I guess. 
and over like Friday Thirteenth fan film money. Like, <laughs> yeah, but that that's yeah, it's so different nowadays. Like, it's just yeah. not the same as back then. And yeah, it's like you just said. You're. I feel like the Friday fan films are more successful and make get more money than something like Madman. They're like, I don't know what this is. I don't care. I don't even so. understand how they could fucking. That drives me crazy. It's like, bro, you can't fucking get money for a property that's not yours to make an out of authorized sequel. <laughs> like, that's not legal. I, that's I know not... there's gotta be. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but we're we're not actually making profit from it. Yes, you are. Right. <laughs> I know you are. Like, at, yeah. at the very least, your career is. Yeah. Exactly. There, yeah. There's gotta be. There's gotta be something. Gotta, like, someone's I, I gotta go the, to jail. I know it sounds shitty to me to say. Like, if you're not involved with any of the Friday movies ever and you're making a Friday movie, I hope you get sued. <laughs> right. I do. I hope when they settle, yeah. your ass gets sued. I mean, and then, like, I know I sound like a dickhead, but hey, that's how I feel. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I, I don't want you to lose, like, your house or your job, but I just want you to not be able to make the fucking movie unless it's money coming out of your fucking pocket. Right. Like, if you have yeah, a no, I agree. Film, it should be funded 100% by you. You should be taking one hundred percent the risk, the chance. It's your you fucking you love the movie so much. You want to fucking you want like, but they're not making them, so we're taking it's the fan ownership, dude. Yeah, they're. I, I haven't seen a single. No, actually, JP and I saw a Friday fan film at Creature Feature Weekend, and it was like horrible. It was just like threw Jason in there, and it was like a bad like crime. It was so boring and. I have not watched any other fan films relating to that ever since because that if you just... paid for it yourself that's fine but if you're like getting money it's like, go away yeah yeah but yeah i don't yeah, think so there's like, anything else to say about mad I, I don't either like good score good atmosphere yeah great killer um i almost asked the um I, I, I heard uh, Paul Ellers on the podcast, like a podcast and on the commentaries. He seemed like such a nice guy. He seemed so cool. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I should try to reach out to this guy. But I just like been hearing it. I was like, I don't want to give him last minute notice and ask him to come on. And I'd like to be more prepared if I had actual madman on the show. You know what I mean? Right. But I, bet he's, yeah. I bet he's a cool guy. I mean, like, I really enjoy the movie. Like I said, like it does. It's, it's a little rough only on the acting at parts, but it's not mm -hmm. it's not horrible. And it's just as it's it's on par with any of the other slasher movies. You know what I mean? It's not like it's worse that much worse than any of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, like, I, I think it's I, very middle tier. Yeah, I put it above like most of the slashers. I don't put it above Friday, too, or my bloody Valentine. Mm -hmm. I, I think I might prefer happy birthday to me. Maybe it's because I was so I was that was pretty good rewatching that butcher baker nightmare maker i prefer of course um i probably mm. i love the burning I'm a, I'm a burning sucker see the burning when it really? came out for me yeah the burning was like, kind of like impossible to get when i was when i was young like and mm. i always wanted to see it was a video nasty and then eventually like amazon put this fucking cheap exclusive amazon tape that was on cut on on their website and i was like huh and it was literally just fucking cheap ass cardboard of it said like Amazon like on it. And it, I bought it and I watched that tape like 50 fucking times when I was like 12. And I showed all my friends, everybody burning. So like, and then after like X amount of time, people just kept hyping the burning up and everybody's was like, the mm -hmm. burning's the best ever. And then it had like a kickback and like, everybody's like, this movie's not great. Like, cause they thought think, it was going to be this. Yeah. That's what happened. That's what happened to me. Yeah. Cause yeah, my whole life, I always wanted to watch that. And then I finally did. And I was like, this feels like any other movie. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, it, it, I, it, it got hyped up big time. Yeah, for sure. Like it, it was it, like, everyone was like, oh, it's like the best, most glorious special effects. I remember people always said, it's like crazy slaughters all those people in that raft. And I'm like, eh, that is a bad I've, scene though, because you don't, it is, it. but and it's, it's got a lot of characters that you know on the raft. So you're just like, oh, yeah, we're doing that. The one thing I had that effect with Near Dark, like I remember seeing Near Dark in the video mm. store and running it, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty good." And then like people were like, "It's the best movie ever." Lost Boys, it came out same year and it got no love. Lost Boys sucks. Lost Boys sucks. Near Dark's the best ever. Near Dark's the best movie ever. It's the greatest vampire movie. And then I like rewatched it a few times, and I'm just like, "What tone are we going for here? <laughs> fantasy, right? <laughs> or grounded? Or urban? Or I mean, like, is this a dark western or is this a fantasy? A fantasy Drama. western? Yeah." Like, it's like mixing two things. It's like peanut butter and like, I don't fucking know, steak. They don't belong in the same milkshake. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. It's, no, I, no. Love, I, 
I love a lot of Near Dark, but it doesn't. It just doesn't come together for me for some reason. Not I like, like it. it comes I, I, together I, for a lot of other people. Yeah, like I would definitely prefer The Lost Boys over it because The Lost Boys it's just a fun movie. Near Dark, yeah, it's like more. Near Dark tries to be very serious toned and stuff, and I think it's a beautiful film. Uh, yeah, I went the driving too, actually. But, I think it's better made. I think that the acting yes, is really great yeah. in it, and I think Bill Paxton is amazing in it. But there's yeah. just certain things about it, like the the it's got like a dreamlike quality, but it's also got a grounded, like serious quality, and I just don't think it comes together. It's like mm-hmm. if if it's like if Tangerine Dream tried to score the Holocaust. Mm. <laughs> like I know it sounds like it's like it's, <laughs> it sounds terrible. Or, yeah, so it's it's just like it's just like that. Um, <laughs> anyway, no. <laughs> um, I think that you and JP have come on for my bloody Valentine, right? Yeah, that would be yeah. yeah JP be loves. I, that movie so i thought so and i hadn't seen it in years that's I his like favorite yeah i think that's one of, I, that's one of his favorite standalone slashers so so what yeah, would you consider sure. standalone slashers no remakes or no sequels or no sequels made in the time frame because like hmm. you know yeah that. i just said that and there is a remake of Black it, Valentine. I, no sequel though yeah I feel like, I mean, I feel like it would be a standalone then because to me, standalone is it's its own, it's one story, then it's over. And because yeah. they just re, they remade that story. I mean, but it's still, it, uh, yeah, there's no continuation. So. So if we're looking at best standalone slashers, so we got My Bloody Valentine. I, I would put the burning in there. I think mm. the burning. I actually am going to have to take some shit for this one. Slaughter High. I seen Slaughter High. It's such trash. It's the April Fools one. Where they like No, spent. I haven't I haven't and they did that on Slumber Party Massacre and I missed the episode. Oh, I so love I still, Slaughter High. Yeah. I've not seen it. Well there's April Fool's Day too, which I was never yeah. a huge fan of, but everyone else loves it, so I think I'm wrong. No, I you know, I just rewatched it because again I was gonna be on that I ended up missing that episode, but that was one of the movies they did, and I did watch it to prep. And yeah, I don't love April Fool's Day either. Not just because of the ending. I just don't really care for like the characters too much in that movie yeah. or the whole storyline in general. It's like, hey, let's make happy birthday to me, but no one actually dies. Yeah, that, that <laughs> is kind of, it does feel kind of like that. It's like a bunch of rich assholes and nobody's gonna Yeah, right. Die. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I that's not how I remember too, but it's been years, like I said. I'm sure I'll watch it and be like, this is great. But I mean, like I, I had this like refine, like watching all these 81 slasher movies and I watched them since I was a kid. And I was just like, man, these are I just was having fun with them, you know? Yeah. And I don't like new slasher here. movies. I do not like them. They're so bad. They're so They're self-aware. Tr- and like, but yeah, <laughs> like they said about this and the final girls, everybody was talking. They're like, this is before like that. Th- th- these weren't rules. And it's just like, why the final girl died? It's like, what's the final girl? Like, we just wrote the fucking movie. She dies. Like, you know what I mean? Now, every, yeah. ever since Scream, everybody's like, there's a formula. I know there is. Like, there wasn't on the first, like, 50. And right. some fucking dorkaloid wrote some fucking essay about it. That's like sometimes you watch, like, some of the things and, like, they're always trying to shoehorn some idea in there that's not there. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, be like, um, they'll try to explain to you that I almost said something, but that might actually work. They'll try to be like, the dormant drip blood is about Reaganomics. It's like, no. No, I don't think so. <laughs> like, I think it's about I don't think a single money. person on the set thought that way, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not George Romero. Um, We're not subconsciously making Night of the Living Dead. You're <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy about new slashers, especially the ones that are trying to be a throwback or just trying to take a bunch from old movies. It's like, it's just a bunch of winks to the point where their eyes like yeah. twitching and falling out. It's It's too much. It's, it's it becomes almost to the point where it's like not trying to be parody but it is parody and it's just not yeah. funny yeah. you know like you might as well just go full parody with like the final girls i thought was a really good uh one you know that one mm-hmm. uh, the comedy one I, that was fun yeah because it, it it's fun past like just the self-awareness and it became its own stupid fucking time lapse story or whatever or a happy right. death day was fun that was fun mm-hmm. but i'm not so sure that was even a slasher yeah not yeah that's kind of debatable. Yeah, but but I don't know. So I appreciate you doing this. Uh, you want to plug your podcast? 
All right, yeah. Uh, yeah, all I pretty much do anymore is the Slumber Party Massacre podcast, which is on the Cut to the Chase feed. Uh, and that is me and Lacey Liu and her sister Nikki and then Heather Powell and Rebecca Reinhardt. And we talk about a bunch of movies on there and we have a bunch of different segments and it's a lot of fun and that's a monthly show. So that's pretty much it. That's all I really... I mean, I did start... At- but for some reason, I got involved with a shitty shark show podcast uh, that is run by Madeline Deering, um, a director that I have worked with and become friends with um, over the past two years. And uh, yeah, we did one episode so far. It's not out yet, but I'm sure I'm going to regret that because I hate bad shark movies. So I don't know why I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but that's only a monthly show. So I figured whatever should be fun. Try to get him to do the Italian ones because at least it's practical effects. That helps. They're they're that, bad, but they're true. funny bad. Like the the, mm-hmm. the CGI sharks, you're like, yeah, you just it's yeah, that's overkill. It's like if you're not trying, why am I trying to watch this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to plug any projects you got coming up, movie wise, acting? Um, I mean, Bathtub Shark Attack that's premiering this weekend, um, and that'll be I don't know what distribution looks like for that yet or anything like that but it's made and then it's going to be playing at gross fest in august august 5th if anyone is in the pittsburgh area wants to come to that um there's an indiegogo right now like for finishing funds for a movie called crackoon that i did a small role in that's like blowing up insanely it's got like a hundred and seventeen thousand views on youtube for the trailer and uh yeah it's kind of Kind of crazy. Um, Shingles, the movie, that's another movie that I did, like a, literally a 0.5 second part in. Yeah, if you blink, you'll miss me. But still, uh, that's a Steve Brzezinski film, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, that just premiered on June 1st. That'll be playing at Gross Fest as well. And he has that available for Blu-ray on his website, which I forget what his website's called. but I'll link it. Yeah, do that. Um, and I think that's all as far as stuff that's like coming out or in the process right now. So, yeah. Any oh, also the podcast they do slumber party podcast is really fun. It's a lot of effort and they're very funny and they do lots well, of thanks. segments, lots of good stories. Any last words on Madman? Um, he's real. The legend is out there. Mm-hmm. Madman versus Cropsey, who wins in a fight? Uh, uh, Mad, I feel like Madman's a little more hulking. I think Madman's a monster. I think Cropsey's just a burn guy. Because when Cropsey yeah. bites <laughs> it at the end, yeah, that's he, gets what it comes down to. he gets hit with the axe and he's just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, see I think if you hit Madman like, oh. in the face with an axe, he, oh, the part, we, the Excalibur part with the fucking, the axe and the sword is great stuff. Uh-huh. When they're, fu- they're yeah. doing that, that's a great little, little setup payoff there too. Like I, I mm-hmm. love that so much. I used it in the opening of my uh, 81 video when he just pulls the axe out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cute. Very cute. Good stuff. Yeah. Adorable. Adorable. Adorable madman. I want a plushie. <laughs> I'm sure they make right. them. Somewhere. I'm sure they, somebody does. All right. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. No problem. Thanks for having me. He's real.